Welcome. Let's take a look at some current liabilities and how they're recorded in the books. We will start this video with sales tax payable. In this brief exercise, we have a situation where we have a rolling boutique company that has cash sales of $233,200 and credit card sales of $153,700, both of which include 6% sales tax that must be remitted to the state by July 15. They've asked us to prepare the adjusting entries that should be recorded to fairly present the June 30th financial statements. So basically what's happened in this case is the company has sales, cash and credit sales, They've collected sales tax with this and they put all of it as sales. So let's take a look at the journal entry that exists in the book as is right now. So to start with, we'll assume this journal entry is done on June 30th, 2020. Instead of the entire month, I'm just putting it as one journal entry. We have cash debit, accounts receivable debit, and that's for the credit card sales and sales credit. So in this case, what the company has done is they have not separated out the sales tax payable and instead inflated the sales number. So this includes the sales tax in the journal entry. So if this had been done correctly, so this is the incorrect journal entry. If this had been done correctly, what would the journal entry have been? We have cash and accounts receivable that are debited and the amounts are the same. That's how much they collected, cash and accounts receivable. So this is how much cash they collected. These were the credit card transactions. Now, what we need over here is the sales amount should be correctly credited and sales tax payable should be credited appropriately. So really all we are looking at is this amount includes the 6% sales tax. So in order to find the cash sales, you will take the total amount, divide that by 1.06 to arrive at the sales number, the cash sales number. So if this is 100%, 106% of this number is the sales plus the tax. In the exact same fashion for the credit card sales, write down the full number, divide it by 1.06, and you can tease out the amount that you want, which is the actual sales. So once again, what we are interested in is only the total amounts over here. So my total sales is $365,000 and the remainder, the different 6% is the sales tax payable. Now this is the correct entry that should have been done, but it was not done. So let's take a look at what I need to do by way of an adjusting entry. So now if you compare these two journal entries, what we're looking at is this number needs to be adjusted. It needs to be adjusted as in it needs to be brought down to 365, it needs to be decreased by 21,900 and that amount should be credited to sales tax payable. So sales should be decreased, so we debit sales. We debit sales and we'll credit sales tax payable and the amount is 21,900. So when we do this, after this journal entry is posted, the sales number will correctly be 365,000, which will go into your financial statements on June 30th. So this is an example where when the transactions were taking place, all of it was just credit, credited to sales. And at the end of each month, the company is making the adjusting entry in order to correctly reflect the sales amount and identify what amount is sales tax payable. So sales tax payable, the company is basically acting as a collection agency for the state government and that money needs to be remitted typically within a week or two to the government. So again, this is a, a current liability that needs to be correctly identified in the financial statement for two reasons. One is it's a liability that needs to be paid, that is money owed to someone else, in this case a government agency, and the sales number should not be inflated. So with this, we will uh, conclude this video and move on to the next one, which deals with payroll.